A farm keeper witnesses the most shocking event of his life when a pregnant sow gives birth to a human baby. What he discovers leaves him terrified and filled with horror. On a calm, chilly morning on the small farm where Alfred worked, the dew was still gently kissing the leaves as the day rose. The breeze made the treetops dance, leaving the beautiful scenery overflowing with an almost tangible peace. The 66-year-old man was the farm's keeper, the one who took care of everything in the months when the owners, the sons of the former farmer and animal breeder, weren't there. The old man had worked there all his life. It was his home. And because he was so dedicated, when his boss died, the heirs let him continue to look after the farm he loved so much. The man walked with firm steps towards the barn, carrying a bucket full of food for the animals, the sheep, cows, and most notably, the pregnant sow Penelope, the largest pig on the farm, were anxiously awaiting his arrival. There was something almost magical about the way the animals reacted to Alfred's presence. It was as if, somehow, they knew that the old man brought not only sustenance, but also love and care. The animals smiled in their own way, expressing the joy and comfort they felt under his care. Good morning, everyone, greeted the man, smiling as he always did. The animals seemed to respond to him, neighing, mooing, and making their usual sounds. He felt very welcome, as if each one of them were a close friend. The first to receive the food was Penelope, as she was pregnant and the most loved of them all. There, there, little friend. You need to eat well so that your babies are born healthy and strong. The keeper murmured affectionately to the sow, stroking her head with paternal gentleness. The sow, with her docile eyes, seemed to understand every word, nibbling her food with quiet appreciation. Because she was so big and heavy, she barely got up to eat like the other pigs in the pen. The expectation of the birth of the piglets was a light in Alfred's life, as the year had been marked by a devastating plague that decimated a large part of the flock, leaving him with only a few sheep, cows, goats, and pigs. The birth of the piglets was a source of hope and renewal, something much desired by the old man, who saw the arrival of new members of the animal family as a way of overcoming and starting over. The man allowed himself to dream of the days to come, imagining the barn once again full of life and the joyful sound of the animals filling the air. For Alfred, each animal was part of his family, and the arrival of new piglets was an event to be celebrated with all his heart. After all, his job required him to take good care of the farm and all the animals that lived there. The piglets would be a great blessing. As he moved around the barn, distributing food and care, the old man reflected on the twists and turns that life takes. He knew that nature had its own ways of healing and that, despite adversity, there was always hope. It was going to be a long day with lots of chores, from looking after the animals to working on the small cornfield. But the man didn't mind. For him, every day was a blessing and an opportunity to do what he loved. Poor Alfred was a lonely man whose life was deeply intertwined with the land he was allowed to live on. He found in that property not just a home, but an extension of his own existence. The vast fields and the barn, inhabited by a variety of animals who were his only friends, were a refuge where he sought solace after the loss of his wife, Lillian, five years before. The animals, more than mere creatures under his care, became his constant companions, patient listeners to his solitary outpourings under the open sky that stretched above the farm. And the poor man suffered greatly when yet another challenge knocked on his door. The most arduous challenge came the year before, when a devastating plague hit the corn crop, the backbone of his livelihood, and killed the animals which also provided him with milk, meat, and eggs. Almost 40% of them were lost to the disease, a blow that shook Alfred to the core as he feared that the new owners would close sell the farm, forcing him to move to God knows where. In the mornings that followed, the old man walked through the lands he loved so much, now marked by desolation, and wept. Poor man. Every tear she'd traced the map of his pain and mourning for what had been lost in his life. How am I going to get through this, Lord? He thought, feeling lost. But it was against this backdrop of loss and fading hope that the pregnancy of Penelope, his most beloved sow, emerged like a beacon of light. 
the old man saw in this pregnancy more than the arrival of new piglets on the farm. He saw the sign of a new beginning, a harbinger of renewal and better days. It's going to be all right, my old friend, he murmured affectionately, his voice laden with cautious optimism as he stroked the robust body of the sow, who received the affection with serenity. The expectation surrounding the piglet's birth was something Alfred looked forward to with a mixture of anxiety and hope. But something strange began to happen. Knowing that a sow's pregnancy lasts approximately three months, he counted down the days on the calendar, anticipating the moment with a mixture of joy and nervousness. However, when the expected deadline came and went with no signs of labor, a shadow of worry began to form in his mind. It's taking too long, he thought, looking at her huge belly with a look that mixed expectation and apprehension. Time passed, and thank God, one morning which began like any other, Penelope's screams broke the silence of the farm, waking the old man up from his light sleep. With his heart racing, Alfred hurried towards the barn, driven by a mixture of fear and hope. The grunts, laden with urgency, could only mean that the long-awaited moment had finally arrived, beginning a new chapter for both Penelope and him. When he arrived at the barn, driven by a rush that tore through the silence of the morning, he was confronted with a scene that made him freeze. The sow, a dear friend of his, was lying down, surrounded by the palpable agitation of the other animals, who seemed to share the same feeling as the old man. Oh my God, calm down, calm down, Penelope. I'll be right back. Oh good, it's happening, he shouted trying to find some serenity in the midst of the chaos that was about to unfold. With hurried steps that barely touched the ground, Alfred ran back to the house. His chest beat frantically, echoing the haste and worry that consumed him. He gathered blankets, hot water, and anything else that could help Penelope. Oh God, hear my prayers. He was ecstatic, tears threatening to fall from his emotional eyes. He couldn't wait to call his bosses and tell them that the piglets had been born. The emotion overflowed his face, like a complex mixture of anxiety and pure joy for the new lives that were about to be welcomed into their home. Finally, finally, he repeated, carrying in his voice a glimmer of hope that lit up his countenance. The expectation of the birth was the promise of a new beginning, a symbol of renewal that the old man cherished in his soul. However, when he returned to the barn, his arms full of love and care ready to help Penelope and her babies, Alfred was surprised by something he could never have imagined. I'm here, I'm here. The cry of a human baby, fragile and determined, cut through the air, leaving the old man in absolute disbelief. Huh? The man stopped abruptly. He thought he was delirious with happiness. What? But it was real, very real. He approached slowly, almost as if he were petrified his legs trying to move with difficulty. In a matter of seconds, a million things ran through his mind. Questions about whether it was really a human baby, whether he was crazy and hallucinating. But no, it really was a baby. Next to Penelope, a human baby lay, its small bloody body vibrating with every sob. The sow, with the instinctive gentleness of a mother, licked the baby a scene of maternal care that was as touching as it was confusing for Alfred. How, how is this possible? The question escaped his trembling lips with an expression of total bewilderment on his face. And he remained like that for a few seconds until he came to his senses and, overcoming the shock, ran to help the newborn baby. Penelope, for God's sake, what is this? He asked, his confusion mixed with the urgency of looking after that unexpected new life. That's impossible, dear God. It can't be, he kept repeating. Wrapping the child in a blanket, he began to gently clean the little boy with the warm water he had brought, his heart beating with a mixture of fear and wonder. As he nursed the little one, a storm of thoughts raged in his mind. The delay in Penelope's birth now made sense, or rather, it didn't. All he had was a new riddle to solve, how on earth could a sow give birth to a human baby? Was she really just a pig? Was that thing in his arms really a baby? Or was the old man losing his mind? Against all logic, Alfred found himself facing a mystery that defied the laws of nature. Determined to understand the inexplicable, the man turned his attention to the sow, 
looking for some clue, some indication that could explain the unbelievable. It was at that moment that he came across another surprise, something he couldn't have imagined. His heart, already overwhelmed by the avalanche of emotions of that morning, was preparing to face the truth behind the extraordinary situation that fate had presented him with. His gaze turned to Penelope, who, despite her unusual situation, was still showing the signs of an unfinished pregnancy. Yes, she hadn't yet given birth to the piglets, let alone to a human baby. Phew. Oh, thank God, ha <laughs> ha. Alfred laughed nervously, finding it funny that he had freaked out, thinking that the baby had come out of the pig. Then the realization that that little boy had been left there, perhaps in a desperate gesture or trust in the kindness of the old man, or as an act of pure contempt, struck him like lightning. Alfred, with the baby delicately cradled in his arms, left the barn in a hurry, a place that had always symbolized life and rebirth on his farm. Bewilderment dominated every feature of his aged face, and the newborn's cry, although fragile, echoed powerfully, provoking a storm of emotions within him. The woman can't be far. He whispered more to himself as a glimmer of hope shone in his tired eyes. He's still dirty. She must have given birth just now. Armed only with his determination and a growing concern, Alfred entered the cornfield, calling out in a voice filled with fear. Hello, is anyone there? Please come out, I won't hurt you. His words disappeared in the air, as if they were swallowed up by the vastness of the cornfield. Walking between the rows of corn, the old man pondered the sudden turn his life had taken. At 66 years old, he was facing the daunting prospect of fatherhood, a role for which he felt completely unprepared for. Will I have to keep him? He thought, beginning to feel terrified if he didn't find the child's mother. Memories of Lillian, his late wife whose absence still weighed heavily on his heart, flooded his mind. What am I going to do with him, my love? What would you do? He asked silently, imagining her with the baby in her arms, emanating joy and love. The sadness at the thought of someone abandoning such an innocent being was remarkable, and the man struggled to wrap his mind around the situation that now stood before him. The search for answers led him to the old shed, a place that kept the riches of the farm's harvest, but which could now hide a dark secret, as the sight of a trail of blood entering the shed chilled his body. With every cautious step inside, Alfred's anxiety turned into fear of what he might find. And then he saw her, a woman, about in her 40s, visibly terrified, recoiling at the sight of him. No, no, please don't hurt me, she begged, vulnerable and frightened. The old man, feeling a heaviness in his heart, assured her in a trembling but gentle voice. I'm not going to hurt you, dear. I've only come to bring your baby. He needs his mother. The commitment to protect both the woman and the child shone in his eyes like a silent promise that he would do whatever he could to help them. At that moment, in the remote farm, a new chapter was beginning for Alfred. The surprise, intertwined with the fate of two lost souls, promised to transform his life in ways he could never have imagined, realizing the fragile state the poor mother was in. Exhausted, sweating, bruised and weak, he knew he had to act quickly. Come on, sweetheart, let's go to the house. I'll tend to these wounds he said, noticing how bad she was. However, the poor mother obviously hesitated at first, fearing the unknown. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on! The kindness in the old man's eyes gave her a sense of security and trust. With the woman almost powerless to walk, Alfred supported her with one arm while balancing the baby on the other. It was a difficult journey to the house, with each step a reminder of the vulnerability and urgency of the situation. But when they arrived, he carefully settled her in the guest room, doing his best to make her feel warm and protected. For the baby, Alfred improvised a crib, placing soft blankets to keep the newborn warm and safe. The mother, after taking a shower and putting on Lillian's old clothes, which surprisingly fitted her well, felt refreshed. The warmth of the clothes and the kindness of Alfred warmed her heart, bringing her a feeling of gratitude and relief. I. I don't even know how to thank you, sir, she confessed with tears in her eyes. When the baby began to cry, the woman instinctively breastfed him, her eyes shining as she watched her baby feed for the first time. 
It was a moment of connection and pure love, an unbreakable bond that not even the most adverse circumstances could undo. Poor thing, she'd abandoned that little soul before, thinking that was the end for her. Alfred, observing the scene with a mixture of admiration and curiosity, asked her why she had left the baby. With a trembling voice, the poor mother revealed that her name was Teresa and began to tell her story. She was running away from a very aggressive husband who had promised to disappear with the baby once he was born. That day, when she was about to go into labor, her husband hit her and she ran away. With nowhere to go now or to live, the woman walked so far that she ended up on the farm where Mr. Alfred lived. Teresa began to give birth and ran to the first place she saw, the barn. There were many animals there, such as cows, sheep, and horses, and she was scared to death. That's why she chose the pig pen as a place to give birth, as the pigs were friendlier. In her loneliness and desperation, as soon as the baby was born, she brought it close to Penelope, who was lying there, hoping that the sow would offer the warmth her baby needed before weakness overcame her. Gathering up her last strength, she fled, but she couldn't stand the journey and ended up collapsing in the old shed. The poor mother cried a lot at having to leave her son. Being an older mother, the woman had suffered a lot during the pregnancy she had always wanted. However, having nowhere else to go now, she believed that the baby would be safer on the farm, hoping that the owner would be kind and raise him. It would be a much better end than wandering aimlessly with her. Hearing Teresa's story, the caretaker felt his heart ache and promised to give her all the support she needed. You can stay here as long as you need. I'll call the owners. I'm sure they won't mind. When you're well enough, you can decide what's best for you and the baby. There's no need to rush, he said, assuring her that she would have a safe place to rest and think about the future. Night fell over the farm, bringing with it an unexpected calm, and the man went to sleep with a feeling he hadn't felt for a long time human connection, a feeling that there were people at home, that he wasn't alone. And of course, as time passed on that previously silent farm, a new chapter of joy and rebirth began to be written, thanks to the unexpected arrival of Teresa and the baby. The old man, whose life had been marked by loneliness after the death of his wife, found in their presence a comfort and happiness he had long desired. Little by little, the affection he felt for the woman and her baby who she named Maddie, grew into a deep and genuine love, as if she were the daughter he never had and the baby his adored grandson. The house, which for years echoed only the memories of happier times, was once again filled with laughter and life. The old man saw in every smile, in every look exchanged between mother and child, a little piece of his beloved Lillian, as if she had somehow orchestrated that meeting to bring back the joy that had been lost. The surprise also came from Penelope, who, after a longer than expected gestation period, gave birth to several piglets. This explained the delay and brought even more happiness to the farm, as there would now be 15 more piglets. Alfred was overjoyed, seeing these new lives as a sign that everything was finally working out for the best. The cornfield, once devastated by the plague, was flourishing again, promising an abundant harvest. The animals, following Penelope's example, were also becoming pregnant, indicating that the farm would soon be populated again by a new generation. Grateful for each new day and for the unexpected blessings that had arrived, the old man invited Teresa and the baby to stay with him permanently. After talking to the owners, who were happy to leave the woman and the child in the house to keep him company, there would be no more loneliness in his life. Instead, he would be surrounded by a family he chose to love as his own. Years passed, and the old man had the privilege of seeing his grandson grow up happy and healthy on the farm, surrounded by animals and nature. Teresa, for her part, found in Alfred the figure of a father, loving and respecting him for all the kindness and love he offered them. When the time came for him to leave and be reunited with his wife, he left the farm in the hands of his daughter and grandson, now a child full of life and joy. He left in peace, knowing that he had left a legacy of love and care, a family united not by blood, but by heart. He went to meet his beloved Lillian 
with a peaceful heart, leaving behind a farm full of life and hope and a family that would continue his journey of kindness and unconditional love forever. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.